My sister abandoned her kids and then accused me of stealing them but when they became successful she wanted back in their lives now. She's furious I told Tian there be truth about, about her. Hello, I am 48F and my younger sister Diana is 46F. Diana and I never got along well as youngsters. She was always snobbish and unpleasant to me so we split up as soon as we graduated high school. I elected to continue my education while she preferred to live with her boyfriend at the moment. It was lucky that her lover was wealthy as our parents could never have afforded the rent for her to live alone. However, she made it abundantly obvious to our parents that she was unconcerned about their opinions on her life and would do whatever she wanted. So my parents never tried to stop her and instead let her go free. Diana had twin girls at 20 and a boy at 21 while living with her lover. My parents were pleased for her but also anxious because she now had many responsibilities and no work. She was wholly dependent on her boyfriend's money to support her lifestyle. Diana never married her partner which I believe was a mistake because she would have been entitled to alimony if they split up. They had to part ways after Diana discovered that he had been cheating on her. Thankfully, he provided the child support she was entitled to, but he chose not to be a father and signed away his parental rights. The girls were three years old at the time, but my nephew was only two. After that, my sister was fully on her own and required all of the assistance she could get to maintain herself. Despite our sour relationship, I chose to assist her primarily owing to pressure from our parents. At the time, I made a respectable living, but it wasn't enough to sustain all four of them. However, my parents and I gave a tiny bit of money each month and they were able to make ends meet. She struggled for the first several months because she lacked a degree and work experience. She had to start at the bottom and work her way up, which forced her to dedicate a significant amount of time to her employment in order to grow rapidly. But this was difficult because she also had to consider her children and she couldn't simply leave them at home. Hiring a babysitter was a possibility but it was prohibitively expensive so she was forced to rely on me or her friends. Our parents were also working and contributing financially to aid her so they were unable to stay at home with the children. I was in the same predicament. She didn't have any friends who would take on the duty of minding her children while she worked because they all had their own lives and occupations. As a result, she was limited to minimum wage positions that allowed her to work flexible hours and return home quickly. This allowed her to avoid paying the babysitter to stay with her children for an extended period of time, which would have been prohibitively expensive. This condition persisted for a few years, and I believe Diana began to despise her own children because she saw them as hurdles to her success. She said that they were the only things preventing her from moving forward. I would pay her a visit on occasion, not for her sake, but for the sake of the children, to make sure they were doing well. I didn't have a nice connection with her, but I wasn't ruthless enough to let innocent children suffer because of their mother's poor decisions. So, my parents and I would check on the kids on a regular basis. They were always complaining about Diana's mistreatment of them. She would chastise them for minor infractions and strike out at them simply for being children and trying to have fun. It was a dreadful existence for all of them, and I hoped I could help them by removing them from that place and keeping them with me. But I couldn't because she was the rightful parent and I had no legal authority over them. Furthermore, she received child support from her ex and was doing her best to make ends meet. I felt awful for her, but even worse for the kids. Diana started seeing other men, which made things considerably worse. Every time a relationship failed, she blamed her children. She was convinced that once her partners discovered she was a mother of three, they would abandon their relationship with her. I believe it was because she never mentioned her children during the early stages of dating, only bringing it up after a month or two, which appeared dishonest. I tried several times to explain this to her, but she was convinced that she was being rejected because she had children. She kept teasing them about it, reminding them of how their father had abandoned her and threatening to leave them as well if they didn't behave. The children were scared of her, and their childhood was defined by their mother's narcissism. This continued for years. Several times, I considered taking the kids and fleeing with them, but I couldn't. I could not petition for custody or denounce her because, while her actions were wrong, they did not justify taking the children away from her. So the scenario remained and the kids were simply grateful to have me in their life. My parents were too elderly to be their pals, but I was always there for them when they needed it. They could never tell their mother about their issues, but they could always go to their aunt, which they did. Whenever they had problems with school, academics, or even Diana, they would come to me and I appreciated their trust. It's no surprise that when they turned 18, they decided to leave their mother's house and move in with me instead. Now that they were no longer children, they could select where and with whom to live and they chose me. Diana was clearly dissatisfied and had a lot to say. She stated she had squandered 18 years of her life raising these children, only for them to abandon her in the end. She was really unpleasant about it, telling me that if I had wanted to raise her children so badly, I should have stepped in sooner rather than taking over after the work was basically done. I wanted to tell her that she hadn't actually raised them. They had basically raised themselves because she was usually at work or out on dates with guys who eventually dumped her after discovering she had three children. She had no idea what her priority should be and it was clear why things turned out as they did. The children selected the person who had genuinely been there for them over the person who had always tortured and reprimanded them since she couldn't find anyone and was miserable in her life. 
It was evident that she had no idea she was harming them because she was suffering herself. However, I did not want to rub it in her face because I knew it must have been unpleasant for her, which is why she was lashing out at me. So I kept my mouth shut and that was it. After that, we didn't really communicate. Her children opted to leave her and live with me. Diana also chose to cut ties with all of us and cease speaking to anyone, including our parents. This was weird because they had done nothing to deserve it. I believe the fact that they hadn't chosen her side against me when my nieces and nephew opted to live with me irritated her, so she cut them off as well. It's been seven years, and they're all doing well now. I don't know what Diana has been up to, but I know her children are doing well. My nephew attended medical school and is now a pediatrician. One of my nieces has a degree in literature and is now a teacher and her twin sister has a hair shop. I assisted all of them in obtaining business loans and financed them to the best of my ability. I'm very proud of them because they've gone a long way from their previous home. They are now living apart. They only stayed with me for four years, and even then, it wasn't really like they were living with me because they were generally away at college and only came back on occasion. I believe they didn't want to return to Diana's home where they didn't feel wanted. It's been two years since they all moved out, and I'm very thrilled for them. I never expected anything in return for what I did because I truly believed it was the right thing to do. They were just kids and no matter how bad things were between me and my sister, I could never be callous to them. I've always had a soft spot for them, especially since I've never had kids or married. It wasn't my cup of tea, but for them, I wanted to be there as a parental figure because their father wasn't around, and, well, we all know who Diana was. They needed someone, and my parents were too old for the position, so I stepped forward. That is all I did. I never anticipated anything in return, but I am grateful that they are the type of children who think I deserve a gift of appreciation for what I'd done. Even though I don't believe it was something that required compensation, I appreciated their gesture. About a week ago, I celebrated my 48th birthday with my friends and family, including my nieces and nephew. I had a great time and my nephew was kind enough to organize everything for me. Despite my desire to pay for everything, he insisted on covering the cost because he is now earning enough money to do things for me and display his appreciation. After the party, the three of them sat me down to talk. They told me that now that they were all financially established, they wanted to express their gratitude by collectively writing me a check. I tried to explain that it was unnecessary because I was still working and could support myself, but they insisted. They claimed it wasn't about repaying a debt. They could never repay me for what I had done for them since it wasn't about money. It was about the encouragement and faith I had provided them, which they could never fully repay. This was their humble attempt to show their appreciation. I was deeply moved by their genuine act and wanted to share it on social media. I just wanted to thank them for everything they were doing for me. My sister and I hadn't spoken in years, so I didn't think she would care. I was blocked on every platform and I assumed she wouldn't see it, so I felt it was fine. Diana had never followed up with us or inquired about her children's well-being after they had left home. Granted, it was they who broke up with her first and moved in with me, but that was her fault. The least she could have done was show interest in their lives and try to be a mother figure to them in order to make one for her faults. But to be honest, she didn't seem to care about the loss of communication, so I figured she was all right. Anyway, following that post, I received a reply from her a few days ago. I wasn't expecting it because, as I indicated, we hadn't spoken in six years. However, I should have predicted that as soon as she realized her children were financially secure, she would start sniffing around like a bloodhound, trying to figure out how much money she could obtain from them. In her reply, she stated that she had seen my post and wanted to talk about her children. She recognized that she had made mistakes in the past and had not been a good mother to kids, but she felt compelled to give herself another shot. She claimed she had missed them a lot over the previous six years. I'm not sure how much truth there is in that statement because if she truly missed them, she could have contacted me at least once. She asked me to speak with her children and help bridge the gap between them as they respond well to me. The timing was strange, so I ignored her message. However, when I failed to react, she called me in the evening, and I snapped. She insisted that I assist her in reconnecting with her children, but I refused. I was quite aware that she was merely pursuing their money, not because she truly cared about their well-being. If she truly regretted what she had done, she would have contacted them directly rather than talking to me. She couldn't let go of her pride and ego for a single second. She still expected her children to contact her, despite the fact that she was the one who had made a mistake. It was amazing how entitled she was. She tried to dispute with me, arguing that she wasn't pursuing their money and that it was offensive for me to suggest so. I assured her that I was not implying anything. It was so obvious. I felt appalled and repulsed by what she was doing. She then accused me of stealing everything from her, claiming that I had already stolen her children and was now stealing her riches. I informed her that I didn't need the money and was originally hesitant to accept the check, but now I was going to take it all because she didn't deserve it. Now she's crying on social media, telling everyone what I said and attempting to make me seem bad. Some of my relatives say I went too far with what I said, that I am greedy, and that I owe her an apology, which is absurd. That is why I am here to inquire if I am in the wrong for telling my sister that she does not deserve the money that her children have decided to give me. Update. As some responses advised, I recounted the situation with my nephews and nieces. They informed me they had heard about it from a few of relatives, 
and had considered speaking with me but had not had the time. However, after I called them over and discussed it with them, they informed me that they believed I did the correct thing. My nephew was open about his views, stating that he had never considered of his mother as a maternal figure throughout his life. He always blamed me because she had never been there for him, and my niece agreed. He'd always been the most outspoken of the group, so it was predictable that this was all coming from him. My nieces were too emotional to speak, but he was quite angry and upset. He explained that Diana only spoke to me since she had never done the basic minimum for them. This was despite the fact that she was receiving child support from their father and even then she would humiliate them and make them feel horrible for merely existing, which was not their fault. They believe I did the right thing and have informed me that they will not contact their mother, regardless of what happens. They also believe that I should stand up for myself and explain my side of the story online now that Diana has decided to speak negatively about me on social media. They believe that this is the most effective approach to convey the message, therefore that's what I'll do. I'm delighted they opted to take my side in this because my parents are staying out of it and have stated that they don't want to get involved. Diana never spoke to them after her children cut her off, which I find unusual. My parents' polite approach to this problem strikes me as unusual. Given that they have not communicated with Diana in the last six years, I was disappointed, but at least my nieces and nephew support me. Now, many people have asked me why I did not petition for custody and have the children taken away from Diana if I knew she was a bad mother and was mistreating them. I mentioned in my piece that, while her actions were wrong, they did not constitute torture, abuse, or neglect. She was constantly harsh to them and wasn't emotionally present for her children. So while I could have filed for custody, it was quite improbable that I would have gotten the children into my care. Courts typically encourage families to keep together, and in this case, they had already lost their father. Their father had abandoned them, leaving them with only their mother as a biological parent. Naturally, the court would want the family to stay together. I knew that if I filed a petition against her or took legal action against Diana, she would ensure that I never saw them again. She would make certain that she took the kids far away from me. It was already improbable that I would have been able to take kids away from her and obtain full custody so this would have put them in a dangerous situation. This is why I decided to play it safe by staying in touch with them and being available for them at all times. I'm not sure if it was the correct thing to do in the long term, but at the time it seemed like the only option. Maybe there were other ways to deal with it, but it was all I could think of, so I did what I believed was right. It was difficult for me, and for years I debated whether I should file for custody or have kids taken away from her and rehomed, but there's no telling what might have occurred, and I figured it was better for kids to stay with their mother and maintain touch with me and my parents than risk anything in this circumstance. I hope this answers the questions most people had for me. Maybe I came across as the evil guy for what I did, but I don't care. I know the kids are doing well in their life, and I did everything I could to keep them happy and safe. I was always there for them, therefore I don't feel guilty about anything. Update 2. It's been a week since Diana's message, and I've received a lot of phone calls from family and people who have spoken with her. They were pointing out my mistakes and scolding me. It was getting really tiresome, and I was swamped with work, which is why I hadn't been able to post sooner. But today, I decided I'd had enough. After a brief talk with my nephew and nieces, I decided to finally make a post that shared my side of the story as well as, in some ways, theirs. I don't think anyone in the family realized how much those kids had been through as children, how many taunts they had to endure every day simply because Diana opted to become pregnant early and drop everything for her boyfriend at the time. Even after that, she continued to blame others for her own actions and attempted to appear as if she was doing everything in her ability to do the best for her children, but in actuality she was never present for them. Since she was telling everyone that I had stolen her children from her and was now stealing a fortune from her, now that her children were doing well financially, I felt people deserved to know the truth, not just her twisted version of events in which she was the victim rather than the person who tormented everyone. They had already judged me for a variety of reasons since they only knew her side of the story and sympathized with her. But in reality, I deserved to share my side of the story, as did her children. So I typed everything up a few hours ago and published the post. So far, she hasn't said anything to me, and the only texts I've gotten are from relatives who were judging me earlier. They have now abruptly changed their tune, and are attempting to apologize for judging me too soon. But frankly, it means nothing to me. I simply wanted them to know the truth. I don't care what they think of me, but it was vital for me to speak the truth and share how Diana handled her children, which is why they are no longer in contact with her. Anyway, now that everything is finished, I am ready to move on from this. Honestly, I don't want anything to do with Diana anymore, and I was perfectly content for the past six years when she didn't contact me. I believe the same may be stated for her children as well. I don't understand why she felt the need to create so much drama. If she wanted money, she might have asked for it rather than pretending to want another chance at motherhood. Update 3. It's been a day since I wrote that post. Diana may have woken up today and decided to get back at me. Instead of contacting me directly, she became increasingly dramatic and began commenting on that post, attempting to make it appear as if I was lying. But it was not going to work. Obviously, 
as soon as she attempted to react, her children began commenting and responding to her, or reminding her of particular episodes from their childhood in which she had been cruel to them that lasted about an hour and I didn't feel awful about it. Nobody else did because my nephew, nieces, and I were all thoroughly enjoying the process. They were utterly humiliating her, and there was no way she could get out of it since every single lie she tried to say to make me look bad was discovered. I'm glad I chose to do this on the weekend. Otherwise, we might not have been able to respond as swiftly. Anyway, that lasted about an hour, and then she began deleting her comments so that no one could catch her in her falsehoods. However, it was too late because many others had already noticed what was going on in the comment section, and I believe she began to be called out for her actions by others. She started erasing her comments and backtracking on everything she said and then she blocked me. She also blocked her children. I'm guessing it was her way of surrendering and I'm pleased she did because she would have lost in a fight with us. We clearly have the upper hand here, morally or otherwise. I believe deleting the comments would be the end of our connection but she chose to contact me personally as well. She messaged me, saying she hoped I was happy now that I had presented her as the monster and everyone hated her. It was very ironic coming from her because that was exactly what she was attempting to do to me first. She initiated it, and now when I wanted to return it to her, she is unable to accept it. I don't understand why individuals attempt to dish it out when they know they can't take it in return. Just don't cause any drama if you don't want to be held accountable for the results. Anyway, I disregarded that message and that's what we're all going to do for the rest of our lives because she's no longer worth our attention. She has proven it. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real life stories happening around you.